A good day to all of you. For this video, I would like to talk about three topics. The skin and its structures, the different bones of the skeletal system, and the major muscles of the human body. Skin and its structures. The skin in our bodies is the largest and heaviest organ. In fact, it is a complex organ. How so? An average square inch of skin contains 650 sweat glands, 20 blood vessels, and more than 100 nerve endings. Despite being just a few millimeters thick, skin makes up around one-seventh of our body weight. Its most obvious job is to protect our insides from the outside. But there is much more to the skin than that. The skin helps us maintain the right internal temperature and permits the sensations of touch, heat, and cold. What is the skin structure? The skin has three basic levels. The epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. Let's first discuss the epidermis. These are its main roles. Makes new skin cells, gives skin its color, and protects the body. The epidermis is the outermost layer. It is a waterproof barrier that gives skin its tone. Dead cells are shed continuously from the epidermis as new ones take their place. We shed around 500 billion, million skin cells each day. In fact, the outermost parts of the epidermis consist of 25 to 30 layers of dead cells. New cells are made in the lower layers of the epidermis. Over the course of around four weeks, they make their way to the surface become hard and replace the dead cells as they shed. Keratinocytes. These are the most common cell type within the epidermis. Their job is to act as a barrier against bacteria, parasites, fungi, viruses, heat, ultraviolet rays from the sun, and water loss. The epidermis contains no blood vessels. The color of our skin is produced by a pigment called melanin, which is produced by melanocytes. As you can see here in the picture. These are found in the epidermis and protect the skin from UV rays. The epidermis is subdivided into five layers. The stratum corneum, Oops. The stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and the stratum germativum. Let's start from the upper one, the stratum corneum. It is the most superficial layer of the epidermis. This dry, dead layer helps prevent the penetration of microbes and the dehydration of underlying tissues and provides a mechanical protection against abrasion for the more delicate underlying layers. The stratum lucidum. It is a smooth, seemingly translucent layer of the epidermis located just above the stratum granulosum and below the stratum corneum. This thin layer of cells is found only in the thick skin of the palms of our hands and soles of our feet. Next is the stratum granulosum. It has a grain appearance due to further changes to the keratinocytes as they are pushed from the stratum spinosum. The cells, three to five layers deep, become flatter. Their cell membranes thicken and they generate large amounts of protein called keratin. Next, 
X is the stratum spinosum. As the name suggests, the stratum spinosum is spiny in appearance due to the protruding cell processes that join the cells via a structure called a desmosome. The desmosomes interlock with each other and strengthen the bond between the cells. And the last layer of epidermis is the stratum germa germinativa. It is the deepest epidermal layer and attaches the epidermis to the basal lamina, which below which lie the layers of the dermis. After the epidermis is the dermis. These are its main roles. Make sweat and oil, provide sensations to the blood and blood to the skin and grows hair. The dermis is mostly connective tissues and protects the body from stress and strain. It gives the skin strength and elasticity. If the dermis is stretched a lot, for instance, during pregnancy, the dermis can be torn and this shows up as the so-called stretch marks. The dermis contains nerve endings, sweat glands and oil glands, hair follicles and blood vessels. The nerve endings sense pain, touch, pressure and temperature. Some areas of the skin contain more nerve endings than others. For example, the fingertips and toes contain many nerves and are extremely sensitive to the touch. Sweat glands produce sweat in response to heat and stress. Sweat is composed of water, salt, and other chemicals. And as sweat evaporates off the skin, it helps cool the body. Next are the oil glands. They secrete sebum into hair follicles. Sebum is an oil that keeps the skin moist and soft and acts as a barrier against foreign substances. Next are the hair follicles. Hair follicles produce various types of hair found throughout the body. Hair not only contributes to a person's appearance, but has a number of important physical roles, including regulating body temperature, providing protection from injury, and enhancing sensation. The blood vessels. The blood vessels of the dermis provide nutrients to the skin and help regulate body temperature. The dermis is further split into two layers, the papillary region and the reticular region. The papillary region is made of loose connective tissue. It has finger-like projections that push into the epidermis. These projections give the dermis a bumpy surface and are responsible for the patterns we have on our fingertips or the fingerprints. Next is the reticular region. It is made of dense, irregularly organized connective tissue. Protein fibers in the reticular region give, strength, give skin its strength and elasticity. The last part of the skin structure is the hypodermis. It is also known as the fat layer. Its main roles are uh, the following. It attaches dermis to the body, controls body temperature, and stores fat. It is not technically part of the skin, but help attach the skin to underlying bone and muscle. It also provides skin with nerves and blood supply. This layer of fat helps insulate the body from heat and cold, provides protective padding for our bones and muscles, and serves an energy storage area. The fat is contained in living cells called fat cells, held together by fibrous tissue. The fat layer varies in thickness from a fraction of an inch on the eyelids to several inches on the abdomen and buttocks in some people. 
Now do you get the skin and its structures? To summarize, the skin is our body's physical armor. It is made up of three layers, the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. So let's move on to the different bones of the skeletal system. If you've ever seen a real skeleton or fossil in a museum, you might think that all bones are dead. Although those bones are dry, hard, or crumbly, the bones in your body are different. The bones that make up your skeleton are all very much alive, growing and changing all the time like other parts of your body. Bones provide the structure for our bodies. Bones are made of connective tissue reinforced with calcium and specialized bone cells. Most bones also contain bone marrow, where blood cells are made. The skeleton supports and shapes the body and protects delicate internal organs such as the brain, heart, and lungs. The adult human skeleton is made up of 206 bones. These are the skull, spine, ribs, arms, hands, pelvis, legs, and feet. First is the skull. Your skull protects the most important part of all, the brain. The skull is actually made up of different bones. Some of these bones protect your brain, whereas others make up the structure of your face. If you touch beneath your eyes, you can feel the ridge of the bone that forms the hole where your eye sits. And although you can't see it, the smallest bone in your whole body is in your head too. The stirrup bone behind your eardrum is only 0.1 to 0.30 inches long. As you can see in the picture, uh, it is compared to a finger. It, it is smaller than the finger. And another additional fact is that your lower jawbone is the only bone in your head you can move. It opens and closes to let you talk and chew food. Second is the spine. Your spine is one part of the skeleton that's easy to check out. Reach out to the center of your back and you'll feel its bumps under your fingers. The spine lets you twist and bend and it holds your body upright. It also protects the spinal cord. The spine is special because it isn't made of one or even two bones. It's made of 33 bones in all. These bones are called vertebrae and each one is shaped like a ring. There are different types of vertebrae in the spine and each does a different kind of job. The first seven vertebrae at the top are called the cervical vertebrae. These bones are in the back of your neck, just below the brain, and they support your head and neck. Your head is pretty heavy, so it's lucky to have help from the cervical vertebrae. Below the cervical vertebrae are the thoracic vertebrae, and there are 12 in all. These guys anchor your ribs in place. And below the thoracic vertebrae are five lumbar vertebrae. Beneath the lumbar vertebrae is a sacrum, which is made up of five vertebrae that are fused together to form one single bone. Finally, all the way at the bottom of the spine is the coccyx, which is one bone made of four fused vertebrae. The bottom sections of the spine are important when it comes to bearing weight and giving you a good center of gravity. So when you pick up a heavy backpack, the lumbar vertebrae, sacrum, and coccyx give you the power. When you dance, skip, and even walk, these parts help you keep balance. In between each vertebrae are small discs made of cartilage. These discs help uh, keep the vertebrae from rubbing against one another, and they are all 
and they also act as your spine's natural shock absorbers. When you jump in the air or twist while slamming a dunk, the discs give your vertebrae the cushioning they need. The third, the ribs. Your heart, lungs, and liver are all very important. And luckily, you've got ribs to keep them safe. Ribs act like a cage of bones around your chest. It's easy to feel the bottom of this cage by running your fingers along the sides and front of your body. A few inches below your heart, if you breathe in deeply, you can easily feel your ribs right in the front of your body too. Sometimes kids can even see a few of their ribs right through their skin. Your ribs come in pairs, and the left and right sides of each pair are exactly the same. All 12 pairs of ribs attach in the back to the spine, where they are held in place by the thoracic vertebrae. The first seven pairs of ribs attach in the front of the sternum, a strong bones in the center of your chest that holds those ribs in place. The remaining sets of ribs don't attach to the sternum directly. The next three pairs are held on with cartilage to the ribs above. The very last two sets of ribs are called floating ribs because they aren't connected to the sternum or the ribs above them. But don't worry, these ribs can't ever float away. Like the rest of the ribs, they are securely attached to the spine in the back. Fourth, the hands. As you type at the keyboard, you're using the bones of your fingers, hand, wrist, and arm. Each arm is attached to a shoulder blade or scapula. A large triangular bone on the upper part, upper back corner of each side of the rib cage. The arm is made up of three bones: the humer humerus, which is above your elbow, the radius, and ulna, which are below the elbow. Each of these bones is wider at the ends and skinnier in the middle to help give it strength where it meets another bone. At the end of the radius and ulna are eight smaller bones that make up your wrist. Although these bones are small, they can really move. Twist your wrist around, wave, and you'll see how the wrist can move. The center part of your hand is made up of five separate bones. Each finger on your hand has three bones except for your thumb, which has two. So between your wrists and hands and all your fingers, you've got a grand total of 54 bones, all ready to help you grasp things, write your name, or scroll on your cell phone. Fifth, the legs. Sure, your arm, wrist, hand and finger bones are great for picking up something. But how are you supposed to move your body toward the di direction you want to go to? Well, you use your legs and feet. Your legs are attached to a circular group of bones called your pelvis. The pelvis is a bowl-shaped structure that supports the spine. It is made up of the two large hip bones in front and behind the sacrum and the coccyx. The pelvis acts as a tough ring of protection around parts of the digestive system, parts of the urinary system, and parts of the reproductive system. Your leg bones are very large and strong to help support the weight of your butt. The bone that goes from your pelvis to your knee is called the femur, and it's the longest bone in your butt. At the knee, there's a triangular shaped bone called the patella, as you can see here in the picture, or kneecap, that protects the knee joint. Below the knee are two other leg bones, the tibia and the fibula. Just like the three bones in the arms, the three bones in the leg 
are wider at the ends than in the middle to give them strength. The ankle is a bit different from the wrist. It's where the lower leg bones connect to a large bone in the foot called the talus. Next to the talus are six other bones, but the main part of the foot is similar to the hand with five bones. Each toe has three tiny bones, except for your big toe, which has two. This brings the bone total in both feet and ankles to 52. And the last one, the joints. The place where two bones meet is called a joint. Some joints move and others don't. Fixed joints are fixed in place and don't move at all. Your skull has some of these joints called sutures, which close up the bones of the skull in a young person's head. One of these joints is called the parietotemporal suture. It's the one that runs along the side of the skull. Moving joints are the ones that allow you to twist, bend, and move different parts of your body. Some moving joints, like the ones in your spine, move only a little. Other joints move a lot. One of the main types of moving joints is called a hinge joint. Your elbows and knees each have hinge joints which let you bend and then straighten your arms and legs. These joints are like the hinges on a door. Just as most doors can only open one way, you can only bend your arms and legs in one direction. You also have many smaller hinge joints in your fingers and toes. To help you visualize it, you can look at the picture and see this hinge, that one. Another important part, uh, type of moving joint is the ball and socket joint. Here, it's also in the picture. You can find these joints at your shoulders and your hips. They are made up of the round end of one bone fitting into a small cup-like area of another bone. Ball and socket joints allow for lots of movement in every direction. Make sure you've got lots of room and try swinging your arms all over the place. Have you ever seen someone put oil on a hinge to make it work easier or stop squeaking? Well, your joints come with their own special fluid called the synovial fluid that helps them move freely. Bones are held together at the joints by ligaments, which are very strong rubber bands. Let's move on to the bone types. There are four different types of bone in the human body. The long bone, short bone, flat bone, and irregular bone. Excuse me. The long bone. It has a long, thin shape, as you can see in the picture. And examples include the bones of the arms and the legs excluding the wrists and ankles and kneecaps. With the help of muscles, long bones work as levers to permit movement. Next, the short bone. It, it has a squat uh, cube shape. Examples include the bones that make up the wrists and the ankles. Next, the flat bone. It has a flattened, broad surface. Examples include the ribs, the shoulder blades, breastbone, and skull bones. And lastly, the irregular bone. It has a shape that does not conform to the above three types. Examples include the bones of the spine. Okay, so now let's move on to the major muscles of the human body. Did you know that you have more than 600 muscles in your body? They do everything from pumping blood throughout your body to helping you lift your heavy backpack. You control some of your muscles, while others like your heart do their jobs without you thinking about them at all. Muscles are all made of the same material, a type of elastic tissue sort of like the material in a rubber band. 
thousands or even tens of thousands of small fibers make up each muscle. You have three different types of muscles in your body. The smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and the skeletal muscle. First up are the smooth muscles. Smooth muscles, sometimes also called involuntary muscles, are usually in sheets or layers with one layer of muscle behind the other. You can't control this type of muscle. Your brain and body tell these muscles what to do without you even thinking about it. But smooth muscles are at work all over your body. Your stomach and digestive system, they contract or tighten up and relax to allow food to make its journey through the body. Your smooth muscles come in handy if you are sick or you need to throw up. The muscles push the food back out of the stomach so it comes out through the esophagus and out of the mouth. Smooth muscles are also found in your bladder. When they're relaxed, they allow you to hold in urine until you can get to the bathroom. Then they contract so they can push the urine out. You'll find smooth muscles at work behind the scenes in your eyes too. These muscles keep the eyes focused. Next up is the cardiac muscle. The muscle that makes up the heart is called the cardiac muscle. It is also known as the myocardium. The thick muscles of the heart contract to pump blood out, then relax to let blood back in after it has circulated through the body. Just like smooth muscle, cardiac muscle works all by itself with no help from you. And lastly, the skeletal muscle. Now let's talk about the kind of muscle you think of when you say muscle. The ones that show how strong you are. These are your skeletal muscles, sometimes called striated muscle because the light and dark parts of the muscle fibers make them look striped well striated is a fancy meaning a fancy word meaning striped skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles which means you can control what they do your arm won't bend to throw the ball unless you want to these muscles help you to make up the musculoskeletal system, the combination of your muscles and your skeleton or bones. Together, the skeletal muscles work with your bones to give your body power and strength. In most cases, a skeletal muscle is attached to one end of a bone. It stretches all the way across a joint and then attaches again to another bone. Skeletal muscles are held to the bones with the help of the tendons. Tendons are cords made of tough tissue and they work as special connector pieces between bone and muscle. The tendons are attached so well that when you contract one of your muscles, the tendon and bone move along with it. Skeletal muscles come in many different sizes and shapes to allow them to do many types of jobs. Some of the biggest and most powerful muscles are your calf and thigh muscles. They give your body the power it needs to lift and push things. Muscles in your neck and the, the top of your back aren't as large, but they're capable of some pretty amazing things like rotating your head around these muscles also hold your head high. Because there are so many skeletal muscles in your body, I'll just mention a few of the major ones. In each of your shoulders is a deltoid muscle. Your deltoid muscle helps you move your shoulders every which way, from swinging a bat to shrugging your shoulders. The pectoralis muscle are found on each side of your upper chest. These are usually called pecs or the pectorals. Below these pectorals are, down under your ribcage, are your 
rectus abdominis muscles or abdominals. They are often called abs for short. When you make a muscle in your arm, you tense your biceps muscle. When you contract your biceps muscle, you can actually see it push up under your skin. Too bad I don't have one. <laughs> your quadriceps are the muscles on the front of your thighs. Many people who run, bike, or play sports develop large, strong quads. And when it's time for you to take a seat, you'll be sitting on your gluteus maximus muscle. The muscle that's under the skin and fat in your behind. Now behind these major muscles of the human body, I would also like to add the face muscles. You may not think of it as a muscular body part, but your face has plenty of muscles. Facial muscles don't all attach directly to bone like they do in the rest of the body. Instead, many of them attach under the skin. These allows you to contract your facial muscles just a tiny bit and make dozens of different kinds of faces. Even the smallest movement can turn a smile into a frown. You can raise your eyebrows or look surprised or wiggle your nose. Now don't forget about the tongue, a muscle that's attached only at one end. Your tongue is actually made of a group of muscles that work together to allow you to talk and help you chew food. So that's all for today's video. I hope you have learned a lot. Thank you very much. See you again next time.